All right. So we learned about the top navigation, according to our books. Now we're going to learn about the left navigation bar. And basically, just go over a couple of drills that they really want us to go through. So again, this is the bar right over here. So under dashboard, basically what we're going to focus on. So of course we got banking, um, sales, we have projects. So again, each of these have their own. So banking expenses, we see expensive vendor, sales. Here's all our sell information from customers to invoices to products and services, projects, payroll for our employees, time entries, our reports, which we're going to use quite a bit, taxes, mileage, there's the account, my accounts, and live bookkeeping. Again, if you just need a live bookkeeper. Because, I mean, a dead one just doesn't work. We need them to be alive to help us out. So again, first one we're going to tack on to is banking. So we're going to view the banking center by clicking on banking right here. Banking. Banking. Do, 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 do. So here is our fancy sponsy banking center. This will basically include all transactions that have been imported from whichever accounts you have linked up in checking, savings, your credit cards, and it's going to actually try to categorize them or find journal entries or deposits or checks that we've already done. Like right here, we can already see records found. And then we got stuff that's getting put in uncategorized income, which we would change to the correct income. And again, we're going to show you all of that as we move forward. Again, just an overview to show you how items are happening. Okay, again, nice little feature to show our banking. Then we got sales. So if I want to see all sales that are going on, or basically our sales at overview, let's see if overview is better. There's our sales overview. Okay, so we can actually see our sales overview. This will give us some instructions of what's going on. We can also go to all sales, which, I mean, as it states, does show all the sales that we have in our QuickBooks. This will also list estimates, unbilled activities, overdue invoices open invoices and payments received we love them all so you receive payment if they are closed most likely we have received the payment we hope so mostly also paid paid's a good one to actually show pay. paid but closed Ooh, never mind those closes may not look all that happy but they are payments in themselves, so we have different things going on. Could have some credits also going there. Those are going to be fun to look at as we move forward. Again, we can actually import transactions from Square. Nice. They have that feature on the demo or the link. Here's all of our new transactions so we can create any new transactions we can also change up the columns print and even export to Excel all of those are nice and fun features you can even do batch actions you want to, to print send transactions remind now we want to we can actually click on uh, the drop down list that says actually find invoice 1035 which is right here 
from Mark Chow, $314.28. And if we click on the arrow for receive payment, which is known as an action arrow for us, our drop down menu, but sometimes drop downs go up. So basically we're going to call this an action column. We can scroll through the cell center until we, well, actually it just wants us to show the action. Okay, cool. So scroll through the cell center until you find refund 1020. Okay, so we're going to look for a refund now. And this is going to be from Pry Cakes. There it is, refund 1020. And basically their action list, because it says send, again, clicking the arrow, only gives us print. So a little bit of different fun things. Receive payment gives us print, send, send reminder, share invoice link, print packaging slip, view edit, copy, delete, and void. We don't want to delete a lot. I will tell you a lot of times, if it's past closing, and you've done to your taxes, do not delete, just void, okay? That's just a count telling you what's going on. So the last thing that they want you to look at, or basically see the scroll down arrow, would be going until we see sales receipt 1011. Nice. So again, this is gonna be for Prize Cakes. And it's right here. And basically, just showing you the actions related to a sales receipt. Nothing more, nothing less. Invoices. So, when we click on Invoices to view, you need to click it here. Or again, you can go sales and invoices. Either way is fine. It actually gives us a nice fancy list of all the invoices that we have. It also will show what's been overdue. So when they come overdue, if they've been partially paid, which is a nice feature too. And when they're due on, it also will show payments and deposits. So Again, we have drop down menus. And let's see which one does the book want us to check out. It looks like the first one it wants us to check out is, of course, Cookies by Kathy 1016. Let's see. There it is. It looks like it's overdue. And then the drop down menu again shows us basically the same stuff that we saw in all sales. Nothing different, nothing less. So again, we're seeing all of our invoices. We also want to go look at 1004. So again, it's easier to look here. I can also probably sort it by number if I wanted to. That makes it quicker if you need to sort again it's best to keep it by date but here I could sort hit the drop down menu and there's our print because this is a paid invoice again you can keep it by date I think they were keeping it by status yeah they were keeping it by status but you can definitely sort either way that you want. Again, if you just need some help on finding a certain one, then you can do so as that. You can also add columns. All right, customer. Well, they didn't really have a lot, but again, we are the overview. So customer again, if you're in all sales, you can go to customers. Or you can go sales, then customers. Either way, this gives us all the information that we have from all of our customers. It will also, again, allow us to do receive payment or 
create an invoice or even show that there is an open invoice. So once we look at those again, basically all the information, let's see if it actually has us click on one does not. I'm going to click on one anyway, because I want to. So if I click on customer, it will actually show all their data. There is any data that shows all the payments, time charge for an invoice there that we probably need to create an invoice. And everything nice for the history of that client. We can also change everything that we need to know, all the information. We can make them inactive if they're gone. We can also add tax information. Billing, payment, language, a lot of fun stuff when you mess with customers. Again, not truly mess with, but actually putting the information in. Eh. It's all fun and games until someone forgets to send a 1099. But again, customers don't receive that. That is vendors, if you know what your 1099s are. All right, so this one again, we can actually search for customers right here if we need to. We can add more columns if we need to as well. And we can include inactive and include projects if needed. So again, if you hit receive payment, the actions will show right here where we can create statements, create invoice, sales receipt, or estimates. We can even send the payment link if we have one already in QuickBooks. Then we go and find cool cars. Whoops. I clicked on it. Oh, here's another fun search bar. It's right here. But anyway, cool cars. We click their drop down. It's almost pretty much the same. Except a little bit more creating because they owe us no money. All right. Next in sales, we have products and services. This is a list of all the products or services that we have. Again, we can search if we need to. We can filter, which is nice. You can print and export if you need to. This will allow us to basically uh, create products or services that we have. It will also let us edit if we need to. So if I need to edit one, um, we can actually put it here. We can put the SKU. We can put what category it belongs to, instructions, which income account, if it does have one, and taxable if it needs to. Close that out. Again, lots of nice little information that we will get into later on. So if any of these, you can always hit the action bar because they're really big on the action bar where we can show we can make it inactive again no longer needed uh, run a report on it which will show all of our uh, invoices that use it uh, and then duplicate 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 okay next two expenses so here in expenses, in our little overview of this. Boom. Here is actually all of our expense transactions throughout the year. What's in QuickBooks? Again, they can show up as um, basically we can sort them by date, type. Number, if there's numbers, payees, we can actually do. See, I can click here, put it on payees. So I can actually look through there. 
I can look through category. I can even change categories if I need to. If I know something is wrong or if I accidentally accepted a transaction from banking, I can come back here and probably put uh, what the correct category is or account. And of course they have their actions as well. We'll put back on date. I think we're on have it like that. So when we look at these, we can again export it to Excel if we need to print it or anything else that really helps with expense. And basically they just want one again on the drill. Just look at the different action bars. So again, view edit has copy delete. Schedule payment shows mark as paid. View edit, copy delete. And let's see if there's anything else. Nope. So we really don't have much going on there. Close that out. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Since I was, I changed up the search. Nope, everything is pretty much still the same. So just a few little different items. We have view edit. Doesn't look too much of a print. But again, if we see print, it's gonna be much like the scheduled payment. All right, vendors. Vendors in themselves. So again, Here's a list of vendors, just like customers, except just a few little differences. So again, same information. We can search for our vendors as we go, but we can also, if we need to create a bill, we can. So we'll create expense, write a check, create purchase order, or we can even make them inactive. Or Fushana Insurance. There we go. This says make payment. We can create a bill, create an expense. Again, just getting used to all the drop down bars. And if we ever click on one, again, it gives us all the information, all the accounts associated, and our vendor details. Again, we can edit if we need to. And this is where we can track for 1099s if we're doing taxes. But we need some information here. All of it's fake anyway. All right. Workers. I know this is becoming a long video. Uh, mostly because there's a lot in the left side menu. But bear with me as I just show you just these menus as they go. This actually says workers, click on workers. It's actually uh, going to be payroll now. I don't know where it's finding workers, but it's payroll and then click on employees. So again, there's a change there. It's not workers anymore, it is actually employees where we can again find the list of employees that we have. Here we have Emily Platt and John Johnson, which is nice. Only two employees, but again, this is where we can basically pay our employees, add one, uh, make them active, or run a report. So this one actually wants us to go ahead and click get started so we'll click get started and boom 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 waiting it on and they're having some trouble again technical things will happen 
as we work with QuickBooks. So let me see. Uh oh. Let's see if we lost everything for uh, this one. No, it looks like we still got everything. Sales. Yeah. Looks like it just had a oopsies with the payroll. <laughs> All right. So this does happen. That's okay. Again, basically with this overview in itself, it will show how now that started. I don't know if I can refresh. Let me see if I can refresh real quick. Now, nope. so basically I have a little error, that's fine. All that it will show you is basically, again, all your payroll that you have. It will show, uh, again, your employees, which, of course, mine won't. It's having troubles. So if it does happen, we will come back and reload it, but that's okay. Um, if this does come back for me, I can show you. But right now, we do have our contractors. So, we would have workers, probably more workers. <laughs> it's showing more workers on the, the book, but you only have two, so I'm not too worried on that. So, with this, we can actually view contractors, which it actually is allowing me for... Basically, these are again our 1099s, guys. So when we look at contractors, we can prepare our 1099s. We can add contractors. We can write checks, create expenses, and create bills. Again. Since we do have this also activated now, it is activated, it's just I have an error. So hopefully that will be fixed. You can also know here on taxes, we now have payroll tax. It has been added. And you will find information also for sales tax. That's always good once payroll is done. All right. Workers comp. Let's see. We got... Nope, not working. Okay, that's fine. So, workers comp is basically gonna help us set up workers comp insurance if we need to. Uh, we're not gonna need to. Uh, reports. So, we also have benefits. Here's our benefits if we wanna show that QuickBooks are gonna allow. And then compliances. So, more information if you'd like to read. About certain things like the Pay Check Pet Protection Program, the PPP, um, paid family leave tax if we're in Con Connecticut, 1099, 2020, all that fun stuff. CARES Act, they always add more information as we go. All right, so now going to reports. Here under reports, it does have standard reports. And usually the top three are always going to be your accounts receivable, your balance sheet, and profit and loss are known as income statement. You're going to hear me use probably both of those terms for the P&L uh, over in these videos. Again, standard just gives us all the categories and basically a few of the reports that we would use in each of these categories. So it's a nice list as we go through. We can also favorite any that we will want. Here's our payroll. Again, 
probably will not be able to look at most stuff. But all right, I can't. It gives us all the employee data. So here's old employees and new employees. So we at least can get to the data somewhere. You know, back to the report list. So again, lots and lots of fun reports. Let's see if it wants us to click. No, it just wants you to show. Uh, not bad. Again, you can look through these if you want to to see all the different reports you can make. We're only going to focus on a few. Again, there's a lot more. And the more that you uh, basically have fun with QuickBooks, the better you're going to be. Okay? Custom reports have nothing. It has nothing. It will only populate once we actually save customized versions of our reports. This is going to help us in, I mean, if we have something specific we're looking at every time, we just want to have the information. Management reports is only really showing three, but these in themselves will actually show um, basically certain things that we the managers want to look at very quickly. So we can edit, send, export as PDF, export as DocsX, copy. I can click on any of these and it will actually pop up the management report. So this is company overview. And it's nice and fancy. I love nice and fancy things. Okay. Also the sales performance and the expense. Okay. Again, it's just a nice little report for our managers. Nothing big to worry about. <sighs> Whew. We're almost there. Taxes. Taxes. Here's our sales tax. And when we look at sales tax, we're going to probably have to say get started. And hopefully not an error. Next. Actually, this is providing more stuff than we actually really need. So, I'm just going to apply California, just so you can see the tax center. Again, when these are test drives, they basically reset as soon as you exit, so no worries. I just want to show you how it looks. Okay. <laughs> save all right so now that I went through all of that hopefully it loads up real quick or it takes its sweet time when we look at sales tax again this is gonna be basically this section is used to track sales tax what we gonna owe to the government from the transactions that we have and it's going to be mostly divided into sales tax owed and recent sales tax payments. Oh, we want to always use the sales tax subsection to record our sales tax payments. If you pay sales tax as a bill or write a check, the payments will not appear in recent payments list. And it's going to be making it a little bit more difficult to um, basically reconcile and get that payment request or notification off your sales tax as this is still trying to load let me try and go to ports and back to sales tax we'll go monthly there we go I might have missed doing that that's okay but again Here's all of our sales tax. It will actually tell us upcoming. It can help us view the return. 
We can even go back to sales tax settings and add rates if we need to. Add agency. Which again, we can do if we need to, like if we have to pay sales tax in Texas, we can actually edit, make it inactive. We can turn off sales tax if we need to, if we no longer have anything that's sales tax applicable. But we're mostly gonna work with California and your Barker's one and not Texas. Texas does have sales tax, we all know and love it, which is 8.25%. But we can actually do all of our filing right here. You also look at history. Okay, our return is still working. But what we got to do and what is upcoming? So, not much different there. We also view the return if we need to. So here's the return, all the information, cancel. It's really not that bad. Let's see, January. <laughs> Was due, not bad. Payroll tax, again, same thing that's really going on is one, we have a server down, server down. But when we look at payroll tax, this is will also have basically all of our tax information. So tax payment history, which there shouldn't be any for this one right now. Oops, went, went too far back. Payroll, okay, tax liability. Compliance resource. We can even look at filings. So archive forms from the past. Employee setup, employer setup. All this information to help us actually get our payroll in order. Okay. Again, uh, payroll has to be on for us to do it. We must have payroll and to see all of our information. Counting. So, in the accounting section, again, we will have our chart of accounts where you can see your chart of accounts. This is all the accounts in your books. So, all the accounts in the QuickBooks of your client or yourself. And it will actually give you the type and the detail type. So it will tell you if it's assets, liabilities, uh, retained earnings, basically equity, revenue, expense. It mostly keeps it in that order. Assets are first. And then some liabilities. We have a few equity. Then it's income or revenue. Cost of goods sold. And then expenses. And then it will probably have other down here as likewise. Again, from here, we can run reports if we need to. We can change, we can edit, we can even make them inactive. It's a lot harder to make a bank inactive, but you can. We can also view any inactive accounts. So if I click include inactive, They would pop up if there was any. Doesn't look like we really have any inactive accounts right now. But we can definitely run reports. And whatever we need to do. All right. Next is telling us to open reconcile. Really, it's telling us to open reconcile. Yeah. So reconcile right here. If you do have accounting tools, 
Okay, I'm gonna hit get started. Apparently it wants us to get started on everything. But here we can reconcile our bank accounts. So we have to tell which bank account that we want. What is our ending balance and our ending date? Which of course we don't have any of that right now. It just is showing you. But once we actually start reconciling, which again we're going to do in later chapters, you can see how this function works. We're going to go through it. Have fun. <laughs> Last but not least, the My Accountant. If you click on that, you can invite an account this way also. I just like it going through Manage Users. But here, you can actually invite any account that you need to. Just put in the account's email. Again, if without any error, you put in mine boom and then hit invite again since I'm in the sample company or in uh, landscape it won't work because I cannot be an accountant to the sample company all right so that actually concludes this drill so we're going to come back with some keyboard shortcuts and then that only a few other items left yeah that's about it we're going to close it up with one last video okay